Can you be consistent, damn it? Oh, I'm on um, I'm on the chair and I don't want to be on the chair. What? 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 How come you're closer? TK gone. It's crazy. There's Did more you... background than foreground. Thank God, because the yeah. foreground is scary <laughs> right now. But the background is just saving the day. Holy, Things are moving. Holy, right? Yeah. Holy. I would say we've got our hands in so many pieces of pie. It's a lot of pie. That, um, you know, the locals are complaining that there's no pie left for the rest of them. Hey? Eh? I'm getting full. And they're like, man, these guys, you know, they came, they took all the pie, and now there's no pie left for the rest of us. But we're, we're basically saying we're making the pie bigger, guys. We're making guys the pie better. Pie before, and so now we've made this giant pie. It's like a community pie where everybody actually has as much pie as they'd like to eat yeah you can go to the trough whenever you want you can go until you're full eat until you're full until you're full on that pie absolutely what's the pie in this uh, scenario here sure but it's part of the background noise part i know that of the background the, backgr the background noise and the pie are related right there's so much noise so much noise but we're getting we have a friend today who hopefully has a better clue than we do good friend i'd say if anybody's got a clue well any everybody's got a better clue than us but if anybody has the right answers it's santo He's definitely got some good answers. He's got the, but he's got the only answers that are actually facts because he doesn't live data. in the future. Urban Toronto Pro is the most powerful business intelligence tool and database for the development industry in the greater Toronto area. Efficiently generate leads and gather real-time market insights on all GTA development projects. Urban Toronto Pro makes it easy to track projects as they move through each development phase, from proposed to complete and see the latest updates on each one, all in real time, all within a few clicks. Our database tracks over 60 different items per project, and each item can be easily searched across single or multiple projects. Learn more about the most powerful source of intelligence on Toronto's development industry. Book a call with one of our product specialists today. No, and he doesn't live in- He doesn't in, live in, in the future. In he lives opinions. in the present and the past, the facts. The facts. This guy's yes. Mr. Facts. There he is. Hey, folks. Hello, hello. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? You have awesome. a new setup since the last time we did the show. Um, he had to rejig it. Didn't you get the email? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it looks good. Looks great. Look, he's got the he's got the lights in the background. So this is a, in the background. That looks oh. like him. Just top-notch studio. A lot of our real estate friends now are like production houses. It's all in-house, man. It's, it's all, all in-house in production, baby. The only thing you're not seeing is my son on the other side of the camera. We all know that your we son know is the important piece of this puzzle, sir. Okay? Like, Mine is in no training, secret. okay? Mine is in training. He's 10. <laughs> he's got two years of YouTube content experience. He's a, at now, 10, he's, he already knows more than us when it comes to social media. So He's, he's, he's phenomenal. Oh, the sure. videos he makes are hilarious, but like they're just for 10-year-olds. <laughs> that's great. No, yeah. that's great. This is, uh, yeah, this is all in-house and, you know, it's behind me is where I shoot my regular videos. Yep. And I'm at my desk right now, which is the other side of the room. The yeah. other side of the room where the real magic happens, right? Where the real magic happens. Yeah. What's happening, man? This is a craziest market oh. i've ever seen in my whole life and i mean i'm not that old but i've seen a bunch of markets this is fucking bananas not only is the market bananas but the people are going really <laughs> bananas right now <laughs> people I, are at I, I'm, war i am almost afraid sometimes when when the numbers kind of go opposite what everybody's expecting i'm almost afraid like oh no they're not going to believe me is kind of my attitude, but those are the real numbers. In some pockets, prices are creeping up now. Yep. I had five offers last night on a property, sold conditional, another one this morning. Um, you know, people yeah. think that that's just real. There's There's making stuff up. Yeah. You know, we had a, a property that uh, there was 11 offers on. We ended up, you know, it, it's almost funny that I say that, but we, our, our buyers, 
one. See, I I struggle even saying that because like, what did you win? You beat out 11 offers, so you overpaid, but but we didn't. But we all, didn't. but the comment section is going to think you're crazy. Hang you alive. I know. But this is the crazy thing. I put up a tweet yesterday. All of like all the people I really know in like real life, not in like social media land, like, but the real perma bears, they're all super bullish right now. Like they're all like, like looking at this, like, oh man, there's deals coming. Like people are ready to pounce like crazy. Yeah. We, we Is recently it? bought a property for a client. Uh, there was an offer night. We bought it being the only offer below the list price. On offer night. What? Below, Hold on. Below. Yeah. Say that again. You won well, by being under the asking price, and we were the only offer. Oh. Oh. Okay. Just but because that's... they were they were so wrong with their original list price. So, but it most was, people, it wasn't the area. To... Like it was. It was just because was of the East listing York. strategy. It was East Mark. York. What the fuck? And that's East a... York is one of our generally hot the, pocket. Exactly. It's one of the busiest and, and most properties listed have an offer date and most will sell over asking. Yeah. But um, so like even the was... guys in the trenches, you guys, like how do you figure this out? You got one house gets no offers. You win going under asking. You got another one with 11 offers and you're like, like I, we overpaid, but we didn't overpay. It's like, what the fuck is going on out there? I, I, I actually had a meeting this week with who I, think is one of the most brilliant real estate minds I've ever met. Like perma bear, 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 bear. And they're trying to do an analysis on the market. And they're, he, I come in the room and they go, we think the market's down about 20%. And I'm like, like, where is it down 20? Cause I'm seeing stuff where it's like up a little bit and like sideways a little bit and some like, what the, how do you guys do this right now? Well, it is down, but you got to take, what are they comparing to? Are they comparing to February? It is down 20%. Are they comparing Where to though? last week? Oh, how, how do you actually, say like like this broad number? You're talking like, to the guy who knows Daryl here. This is talking, it. But buddy, uh, uh, across the GTA, almost every place is down since January, February, 20%. Yeah. Whoa. But you got, so you got to take it in context, like 20% compared to last month. No, July, August, September generally speaking has been quite steady actually it hasn't mm -hmm. moved mm -hmm. either way very much just, just the, to kind of do something quickly daryl before we get further into the show because i know a lot of our listeners and viewers uh uh appreciate us and if they come to us uh for stats they need to stop that right now and <laughs> and go over to santo's channel okay i think they <laughs> figured that out a while ago. here okay is i appreciate that he is our, he's the leading stats guy and so just on that note because when we were talking about Go to. Um, market and prices and all that kind of stuff, if you want to know, then you just watch Santos videos every other day, it seems like, uh, and you're going to get that up-to-date information on, on what's actually happening. Not what Twitter says, not what your neighbor says, not what the barbershop says, but what the actual numbers are. And that's what we're talking about right now. Sorry, Santa, and, go ahead. and a good story no, to start the video off. There's always yeah. a really There's good, a relevant story, story, right? Yeah, They're all real. They're, they're all real sure. for sure. You can they're tell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, so. it, it was funny. TK, you commented on one and and right away, the comments like you were in favor of what I was saying. And the comments right under that, the fact that you were a realtor right away, discredited everything, everything. You everything. It's like he's a realtor. There's a question mark. And the other one's like, yeah, he's a realtor, too. And it's like, oh, yeah. it's like you, you can't win. I, I have a here. secret, Santo. I make my comments or my tweets and I just walk away. I don't know yeah. what the tweet. I, I even He's the comments on all show, kinds of I trouble. Reply, I just walk away. I don't know what people say. I know it's all nonsense and garbage. So I just I stay far away from it. So I never it does not penetrate my shield of positivity. TK's like Ooh. Trump inciting like uh, violence all over the place that's right it, now. That's it. Throws a little fuel on there and walks away. Yeah, it wasn't it's, me. It's, wasn't it's, me. It's just wasn't it's the me. only way I can do it. I'm not I'm not as strong as you guys. You you though, Santo, like I know what's out there and I know that you have to take a lot of heat sometimes. How do you how do you stay on track with what your mission is? Your mission is to provide information and to help people. How do you stay on track knowing that, you know, there's always gonna be people who are uh 
throwing out accusations or discrediting your information or something like that? Like, how do you stay focused on that? Disagreeing with you. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people disagree. And the, the simple thing for me to do is just tell it the way it is. I truly believe there's no such thing as a good market or a bad market. I truly believe it. It's just a market. And if I just tell it like it is, I don't have to remember what I said the last time because it's all there. Now, if we talk about tomorrow, hey, I'm guessing just as much as the next person is. But the charts on the board are, that's what already happened. And the crazy thing is most people don't even know what's already happened. They no, just yeah, know. it's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I just stay focused on that. And many times I've responded with a comment and just before I hit send, I reread it and I say, you know what, better delete it. Just leave this guy alone. And, uh, but sometimes I fight back. Sometimes I fight back when um, they say silly, absurd thing, not so much about the market because the market can go anyway, but if they're talking about, you know, oh yeah, we're going to be able, you know, basically prices are going to go back to caveman days. I'm like, come on, you know, really that would be, or let me know when prices get to 50% from where they are now. So at 40%, you're not going to jump in. You're going to wait for 50%. You know, sometimes I'll comment and I'll say silly things just to, just to, you know, bring out how absurd their comment was, but, but, but don't they I, I, like for me, they they live in the back of my head there. Like I know what I think, but then they skew my thoughts a little bit, right? Yeah, Th oh, it's, does that... it's so easy. It's so easy. But my biggest mission is to put a chart together with the for time and f bombs that that uh, that Daryl does on his, uh, <laughs> on his walk through Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> i haven't been able to keep up i got yeah the screen's not big enough chart. yeah i i started off like hitting that sensor sound and i was like this yeah. is gonna be like way too much editing forget it well uh, well you won't hear anything no, but, except beep but a beep 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 it's all beeping but listen you you make a good point like you just say it like it is i i think i do it but you have a much different approach than me right you you have a you have a very calm and gentle approach to your honesty, whereas I'm a little bit more uh, in your face, and and you see the results. Like people gravitate towards you in a different way than they do me. Are you? Well, on it's different. You're 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 also all you know. A lot of what you talk about is politics, right? You're talking yeah. about you know Bank yeah. of Canada. You're talking about the government. You're talking about uh, you know. Uh, a lot of stuff related to politics. Yeah. I'm talking numbers. Yeah, you it's can't dispute and what you're talking about. It's the numbers and have whatever opinion you want where things are going tomorrow. Yeah, But you can't argue what I'm showing you now because this is what's really happening. And, and yeah, you know, average has its pros and cons. Median price has its pros and cons. Uh, there's a, Days on market has its pros and cons because it's listing days on market it's not property days on market so yeah we could you know and, and i'll agree with all the pros and cons but these are the numbers we have to work with and i, I focus on that the, the newest metric that i guess is over the last couple of years but maybe even less than that uh is percentage of homes sold at asking or above yeah, I think I introduced that, to be honest. Not but, to but, brag, but... Well, I'm I just saying, I like, that's, I, I see it in your videos, but I've heard it in other places, too. So I, I'll give you the credit, but I really don't know. But it's very new, and, <laughs> and it's and it's true, right? It's like, it's a new metric that... Yeah. Imagine if we did that 10 years ago. It would have been like, what the heck are you talking... Who cares about how many places are selling over asking or not, right? Like, it would never well, would have been... We used to have sign runners. People still do it. I don't know why, but the one home in a hundred years that sold over asking many years ago, you'd be yeah. bragging about it. It's like, Big wow, deal. it's a reason to call that realtor. Yeah. Now it's, uh, it, it washed, know. it washed up, but to, to track that it's fairly helpful. So I was, uh, last night it was York region, the property that I had sold and it was, uh, five offers. And I quoted part of your video, which was, you know, what, what the percentage of, home sold at asking or above was today, which is much lower than what it was back in February. And yeah. so it was, I was able to give them that information because I'm learning from your channel that 
you know, right now it's not happening as much as it was before. So the fact that we were getting it was a great sign and that they should be very happy. And that made them feel good because again, it's not just what Beautiful. I think or anecdotally, it's like, Hey, there's like an actual number associated to it. I probably got the number wrong, yeah. but it, the point was there, <laughs> you know, like pull off the chart. I mean, print yeah. it off and use it, but um, I'll get comments saying, well, this is, you know, many times an artificial number. The listing price is lower on purpose. Yeah, but it does speak to the confidence in the market. Why in January was it 75% selling at list price or more, and now it's 25%? It speaks to the confidence of the market. So, yes, it's many times an artificial manipulated situation. You list it low, you get over asking. Oh, there's so few are right now. No, but it's a, you're right. Actually, an indicator. I was going to say, yeah, it's a sentiment indicator because if you do yeah. look at it as a number, it's like so manipulated. It's crazy. One way up, one way down, doesn't matter. But like as a consistent uh, indicator, it's actually pretty strong. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that, yeah. sentiment is like, look how powerful it is. Like the Bank of Canada said like, hey, we're thinking about like increasing rates a quarter point at some point soon in the near future and everything broke, right? Yeah, well, that's that's the 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 ace in a hole for the whole what's going to happen to the market and nobody really knows, right? Because it is all about sentiment. If 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 sellers truly believe prices are going to in the next few months just come crashing down, we'd have a ton of listings right now. If buyers truly believed prices were coming way down, like way down. Why would you buy now? Like, why would you wait a few months if that's what you truly believe? So it really boils down to what's in your mind, what's in your situation and, and your sense of like, what do you truly believe? What makes sense to you on the ground? But we have yeah. this this weird dynamic right now where like people are getting the prices they've been dreaming of forever, but they can't afford the house now because the, the the rates went crazy. Like this is unprecedented, uh, unprecedented, like crisscross, uh, 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 right? For some people, it's actually uh, some buyers I'm speaking of. It's 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 a better situation. Their their buy in rate, their down payment. Their, yeah, if they have their, cash, they're good. Well, yeah, but but I, I sorry, I don't mean to say buy in, but I mean if they were saving up for a deposit, that home has come down. Say it was one point one, they needed twenty percent. Now it's 950. Hey, they can do it now with 10%, assuming they still qualify because they increased in mortgage rates. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are in, I've, I've helped people in that situation where qualifying now actually became a little bit easier for Oh, because, because you went sub a million? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, down payment the, requirements. Um, the down payment requirements, many yeah. times, that's the the big obstacle for people getting into the market is is saving the down payment. Yep. We had someone on the show recently where, you know, those are the type of people that they're trying to cater to. And obviously there's other programs out there, right? So that, I think that is an issue where you've got income rich, um, I'm going to say young people, but really just people out there who have, who have great income, but just haven't been able to save for 36 years or whatever the banks are saying yeah. you need to save for in, in the, the Toronto and Vancouver but they're stuck because they don't have that down payment and they know that, you know, that's required. So you're right. Yeah. Going up yeah. to, that's a big one though. The point you made with between 1.1 1. 1 and 950, that's a big yeah. one because they don't like yeah. the houses at 900 when the house they want's at 1.1. 1. 1. They're like, I don't want to live in a condo or whatever, but now the 1.1 1. 1 house is 950 and I got great income. My wife and I are both making six figures. Let's go get that property. Yeah. And in some situations, even with the higher rate, their monthly mortgage payments, are similar. So prices are lower now, but the rates higher. In some situation, it's not that far apart. So the rates more, but you know, the the purchase price is, is that much lower where in some situations you're they're kind of paying the same monthly, but it's easier to get into the market. Yeah. Let's just go over quickly. So where what are sales like? What are sales like for the month of September? This is before Trebs released the numbers. What are we going to see? Uh, sales or have they been trending up? How they've do they compare to last well, year? If if we're talking about City of Toronto, they've been they've been trending up in uh, York Region, 
they haven't really moved that much and based on month them. over month month over month uh, or year over year month over month well i i year over year is bullshit is an interesting stat but it doesn't really matter in the bigger picture thing no. it's it's the the trend the direction that we're going right now and you know you fi- we figured uh, many times that um the fall market right we expected more volume because the summer has been pretty quiet uh, as far as volume goes we are in a lot of areas in york region we're like 40 to 48 percent fewer sales this year year to date than last year that's a huge number in toronto i I think it's 25 i got so many stats in my head um toronto i got it here we are uh 29 percent so say 30 percent fewer sales this year and this is just detached property sorry i don't i don't mix all all the 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 house types together but that's Um, about the 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 numbers that we're guessing which will be about a 40 percent decrease in total number of sales by the end of 2022 maybe yeah maybe right yeah in all in all property types like that's that's the feelers that are out there. We'll we'll see where it goes. Okay, so prices. How are prices doing? For detached properties in Toronto, prices for the last four to six weeks, I'm scared to say, have actually been trending up. Yeah! This, is a- this is average price. <laughs> yeah, it's slightly, like very slightly. Median oh. price, median price, you could see it going up a little bit more yeah. uh, so that tells but, you that some more expensive <laughs> homes have been sold over the last you know, four or six you, weeks the median price really being got, higher than the average price increase yeah, right you it's really coming. gotta dive into it uh, it could be with volume also right volumes are not that great so median price gets affected a little bit more okay. when volumes are not that great because just because of the average but average has been steady if not creeping up a little bit okay so and volume is Toronto, left. Toronto detached property. July mm. Toronto took a big hit for detached properties. Yes. Well, but um, all the buyers so- are condo buyers. What's that looking like? Who's buying a house nowadays? Unless you got like three million bucks cash to throw at it. You just need two two sets of parents, a step dad, and a rich uncle. Something like yeah. That. <laughs> uh, That's all. Condos have been quite steady the last few weeks. Like literally. Middle of July, August, and September, price-wise, the safest bet is to say prices have been quite steady. Condos have been behaving as far as sales go the way we'd expect for a fall market. Sales have gone up week after week once we hit September. In the detached market, uh, I've got it right beside me here. Sorry, guys. Sales have also gone up. So Toronto is behaving as far as the fall market goes the way it should, but other markets, not so much. Here's not the most so important question though. Months of inventory. That's it's low. Where, it's still that, low. That's that to me is, is the best indicator of what the market's doing. In my opinion, somebody said 2.5 months the other day. Is it for detached? That's 2.4 for this is for, for week ending. Um, I don't have the new one going up to, uh, September 28th that's we're still putting that together you see I can't just do okay I do my cutoff on Wednesday I can't just Thursday have all the numbers because it takes the brokerages sure. a few days and next thing you know it's the weekend and nothing gets updated on the weekend yep. so it, it takes a few days to get accurate numbers yeah um, Tre- so Treb takes 30 days so you're doing pretty good <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah I know I know, I know. Trev is, uh, it's interesting the way they do certain things. With their own data, people can do it faster. And all they have is, you know, just a button to press. They could press a button and it would be like weekly updates. You guys use their system. It's not just a button. Everything that should be a button, like I've had access to that back end. It's a nightmare. Maybe they've changed it in the last couple of years, but oh my God, I'd have to call like a friend or somebody all the time and go, hey, how do I like just find a comp on the street like this is crazy what i have to don't, do don't get don't even get me started on the paperwork like daryl can you explain to me data import input form like are we going like isn't that something they set up before computers were invented it's all crazy it's like what, I, what would you do for uh inputting data santo i want to hear your thoughts 
what do I do? What no, no what, what would you what do? It, what would be your recommendation on how we build our listings? Like you said, I, I do it all. Form. I do it all. Like the the, the information is all uh, in my files. Uh, I, everything's PDF. I barely touch any kind of paper, and I input it on right on the MLS system on the input sh the web forms when you, on the web forms right online. And as far as the description goes, I do that on a Word document because I got to count how many letters and so. I write out <laughs> whatever I want to write, and mm -hmm. then I highlight it. How many letters is that? Okay, it's like a it'll tweet. Fit, or, or okay, it's not going to fit. But uh, my data input form, I just put per MLS listing, and then when the listing is actually done, I just I attach. I said staple, but I I attach <laughs> it all as a PDF form. In fact, isn't that it. funny? I'm I'm thinking I attach it as a PDF. But I went like this when huh? I was talking. It's like uh, roll down your window. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, <laughs> it's roll down your windows more like this. But yeah. nobody does that. Roll down your windows still like this, yeah. right? It yeah. shouldn't even be rolled down. Turn over the ignition in the car. Yeah. Push down your window. Um, yeah. Turn the so, car on is more like it's a button. Yeah. Push it on. Or what? What? Um, what do you think about Realm? Like, you know, have you I, done that training I've, yet or no? I haven't. No, no. So. I've jumped. I've touched on it. And okay. then I'll, I don't have time for this right now. And I then I'll go back to it late at night. I need more time to really because I can't just do it pieces like I got to absorb myself into it to understand it. I got uh, something I in person to... Monday, so I'm gonna I'm gonna learn all about it Monday. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. So we're changing, Gerald. Remember we had Charles Park on, who was yeah, part yeah, of the technology yeah. board, and he talked about Realm. And at the time, the word NFT wait. was used. Yeah, for I listings. can't wait to see how they fuck this up. I like, don't know. This will be interesting. Accurate that is. But um, Can we record you guys like using it and trying to figure it out. I'm sure it's not that complicated if they've made it for realtors. Yeah. But watch. what 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 I was thinking you were going to say, Santo, or what my idea is, or what I think Treb's idea is, definitely not my idea, is like having like a listing built for each property where like you can't just fudge. Pre built. It. Like you can't say it's a freehold when it's really a condo or like you know. So oh. MPAC and okay. Geo Terranet takes care of like the property sort of details and inputs okay. all that information. So that'd that be smart. We're opening up another door here. If we okay. want to talk about how could we improve the whole listing or the MLS yes, listing. Let's go here. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's what oh. I was asking you about the data input form. I was saying, how do you Where, make it better? So what, what do we do? Square, well, well, first of all, there'd be no data input form. Exactly. Like, what's the point of the form? You're yeah. supposed to actually pen and fill it out and, there's spots for each. Like, like who who does that? I, I I don't know. Like, it makes no sense. And you got it. Anyways, so that's an outdated form. But the fact that a realtor can choose a drop down from square footage, it, to me, is a problem. It should be the exact <laughs> square footage, the exact populated per impact. Now, if impact is off, then it's up to the realtor to do their floor plan to measure the house. We used to measure houses ourselves to figure out what the square footage was. Or now we're using technology where our, our photographers are doing floor plans for us where we can get, and sometimes it's off, but at the very least, whatever impact has as a square footage should be automatically populated. Those other things that you said, it is it, um, is it a link home? Like, you know how many people lie when it comes to that? Yeah. Is it a link home? The the direction that it's faces, most realtors don't even know they're north, south, east, west. You know, this I, and, and it's different for condos. And who you know? cares what side of the street it's oh, on on the listing? No, no, no. Like people care. People why? care. Why? I've I've had clients where the home when you come out has to face north. It can't face south, for example. No, I but that it. doesn't need to be on the offer. It doesn't change because it's written on the offer. No, like you go to the house. The list, we're talking about the listing though, right? Oh, right. The MLS okay. listing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry. Um, okay. But sorry. It, it is on the offer, though. You're right. The fronting yeah. on the south side of Main Street, whatever. Right. Sorry, um, I got thrown off there. Yeah, you're right. But no problem. The, the, why isn't it just like you go on to Geo Warehouse and press a button to import this into your MLS it, listing? It should all be integrated. Actually, it what TK all... saying, if they're doing that, is brilliant. If they're setting up the listings like with everything ready to go for whenever somebody, okay, this house is for sale. Boom. There's your listing. 
Yeah. The only thing you got to work on is um, pictures, you know, pictures describing the rooms. And I, I also think it, it shouldn't be allowed a listing gets promoted without picture. I, I think it, it should be that like there should be something, but we'll see listings without pictures. One dollar. Um, like what is all this crazy shit? Why, why do I, but this is why people go like realtors are playing games and they're marketing yeah. and they're fucking around with everybody. Cause I mean, you do see that, right? So, so hundred percent. So, so while we're talking about ideal scenarios, like, is there a better way to incentivize this market? Cause it seems like the incentives are, are kind of pulling the market apart at the seams, right? Like there's a lot of shenanigans that go on in the background because of these incentives. So is there a better way to do this whole thing? I don't know if I understand your question. To be well, like, either. for example, you Time can look commission, Daryl. Is this a commission? <laughs> the, the, no, the it's not a commission. I don't understand your question. No. Okay. So <laughs> in a day and age where I can buy literally anything online and at the press of a button and pay for it, uh, versus like what we do in real estate, like there's a giant gap there that, that I think needs to be bridged. Don't you like, there's like, we're archaic. I mean, we just invented, uh, a calendars that book listings in the last two years. Like it's crazy, right? Like we're talking about easy things, uh, like importing a, 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 a listing. Like there's so many little things that would make such a big difference in this market right now. Don't you think like, the, the, I, I agree. Like, I, I, agree. I, I mean, you talk about commissions, like why is commission even a static number? Like, why is there even like this thing? Not, like why? It's not but, a static number. Why, why would you say it's a static? Well, number? I think from a buyer's perspective, people are of the opinion that, you know, you could probably get somewhere between three and 5%, depending on who you deal with, who, you know, and like how hard you push or what you want. And, and that's but a do you see it sorry to cut you up, but it's it's what you want. You could find people doing listing for flat fees, five hundred bucks if you want. Yeah. But you're gonna get what you pay for. But, but why is it why is it able to be like that? Is really my question. Like it's why a, it's a free market though, if we're talking Isn't about Isn't every every industry like that? Why you why hire why a lawyer I... for Fifty dollars an hour or three hundred dollars an hour. It's, yeah. it's your choice who you're going to use. And if you don't do a thousand dollar an hour job as a lawyer, no one's going to pay it for you, and they're going to go to the two hundred dollar an hour lawyer because they're going to do the same job or better. No, but actually, I don't think that's true. I think people will pay that guy for a bit until they find out that he sucks, and at that point, like a lot of lives could be ruined. And the same thing happens, like in the real estate market, is some guy goes out there and he like markets that he's got the best thing in the world, and I'm going to do it for one point, and blah 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 blah. And people don't realize that, like, oh my god, I mean, it's on the internet; it must be true. And this guy looks amazing, and he's but driving. But you tell a your Porsche. friends, and you tell ten of your friends, right? I mean, it's. You, you make cheeseburgers know. and the cheeseburgers taste like trash. And then after you eat it once, sure, you're out three bucks, but you're never going back. And you're going to tell all your friends their garbage don't go there. That's business. Yeah. Right. But so, I think with something so big, like there's like a securities commission, even though they don't stop any fraud, like they, there's like these governing bodies that like don't do anything. It's just the whole system seems like a mess well, to me. I agree. We've got we've got governing bodies that don't do much it seems like if i complain about they can a take realtor, a fee yeah they're good at that i yeah and it's volume it still boils down to volume um but if if i complain about another realtor nobody's going to do anything nobody's going to do anything but if the public complains about a realtor they will you know will uh, they uh there's a lot better chance of, of rico doing chance, something maybe, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. um you know, it's, but it's, it's a it, tough, it, it, yeah, it's a tough, um, process to go through and you really have to be sure that you want to take somebody through Rico to be able to, you know, make sure that it holds up and that somebody who's wronged you or, or has misrepresented something is actually, um, held accountable. That's, that's unfortunate, yeah. but it's, it's changing. I think they are, they are trying to make that better. I don't understand it. And I'm definitely not one who could judge it because I'm not the one who's, you know, in volunteering to be on the, on the board to help out. Right. But um, yeah, there's definitely, definitely things that need to come up. So, 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 but like, okay. For example, you are very into the statistics. You think, and I'm not just using you, I'm saying anybody, if somebody's really into stats, they follow the market, they're, they're a realtor. They think the market's going down, but like, how do you, 
not sell real estate? Or how can you be incentivized to be honest and make money in a market where people maybe shouldn't be buying real estate right now? And and why is it even on the realtor, for God's sakes? Like, why isn't there like a financial planner that has to sign off that like, hey, these guys are actually in a position to do this deal that you guys have arranged? Like, like an economist? Just, no, not an economist. Oh. Like, like, like literally like, and why, why, like an appraiser, like I keep going back to incentives An appraiser is incentivized to not necessarily give the correct appraisal in certain situations depending i suppose I, I, on who pays them agreed and if so getting back to your realtor question how do you tell people they should or shouldn't be buying right now it's a very general general statement what you're saying because there's some people that need to buy and sell right now sure. and there's others that have the option of making a decision if it makes sense or not and it really boils down to the individual conversation and situation and you tell them the truth the the only problem i have when realtors say certain things is when they talk about the future because with certainty we can't say but some of them will tell you exactly what's going to happen uh, but we all really should have the role of a consultant. And as a consultant, I, when, when I say, look, before I was doing this, these charts on YouTube, I, this is what I did for myself, for my business. When I meet with somebody, this is what I'd be looking at with them. That's the truth. I, I needed to know beyond the headlines in the news what was really happening. And so I look at this and I say, guys, this is what's happening this is the trending of the prices right now. We know almost as a certainty that rates are going up. I'm talking about not predicting the future, but you know that one's kind of uh, that one we're pretty know, damn sure about now. Yeah, that one we're pretty sure about, but it's hard to say exactly which way prices are going and how far they're going in that direction. What do you think? Let's talk about it. What makes sense? So shouldn't there I've be like so this guy in the back corner going like, because, okay, in this scenario, you got somebody who wants to buy. Maybe they've been like trying to buy for a long time and you have somebody who wants to help them, has their best interest at heart, but also needs to make money on this transaction to put food on the table. So wouldn't it be beneficial that there's like this guy in the back corner of the room as everybody's going, okay, like, fuck it already. Right. Like, let's just go another 50,000 or whatever. Somebody should be going like, no. Well, that's you can't you do that. Sorry, right, guys. If you hire the right realtor, then that's your consultant that's going to stop you there. Okay. So do I've people got share clients. their finances with you and like on a level where oh, yeah. you, yeah, okay. Oh, for sure. I I'm not showing anybody houses unless I know what their number is, and many times their top number is not what we're buying at because then there's the what the bank's prepared to give them, and then there's how much what do they feel comfortable with on a monthly basis, just living every day. And then yeah. it's the buffer of what if interest rates go up another two, so, three, 4%. Who, and you go through stuff. that with your clients? Before oh, for you sure. Can... See, well, this how do you, a, how this do you is, not? I don't think a lot of people do, to be honest with you. I'm pretty sure most don't actually. Out, there. So, out of 70,000 in Ontario, like there's probably a handful that actually do. So the, the property earlier that I said there was 11 offers and, and we bought it with our, our client beforehand we had all these numbers figured out and we expected some offers because the price the, the home was priced under what it should be so we expected some multiple offers i expected four or five but there was 11 but before the whole process started we knew what their top number was we knew compared to the market in the neighborhood it made sense we know how much they can afford like we just we knew all this so we came in a little bit lower than the max they were prepared to pay as it turns out, their max that we went to, that they're comfortable with, turned out being the winning bid. And that's competing with 11 other offers. We didn't compete against 11 other people. Right. We, we, we strategize as far as there being other people wanting to buy. This is our number. And you put in an offer. We put in an offer knowing that we'd get another shot to raise. We knew that. It's just the way it goes. So yeah. we came in a bit lower. Uh, we had conditions. It was all part of strategy, right? And then 
We went a little higher, but not because of what other people were doing, but because we knew we were going to get another round and we had to show that we were doing something. And then we removed a condition to entice it a little bit. And we didn't need a financing condition, but we put it in and then removed. there's a strategy. But at the end of the day, what it was purchased at was by no means what anybody would consider, uh, you know, you overpaid. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but this is supposed to be our job. We got to know what our people are comfortable with. And so are you both working with more buyers these days? Um, like this is list minute, to last a thing of the past? Ooh, I like that. Is list no, to last? No, it's not. Okay. Damn. No, it's still, it's still, it's still the same thing. Um, yeah. I happen to have more buyers right now because we've sold off a couple of listings, but um, it's normally half and half with me. So one of the things, Daryl, that you're talking about was financials and the buyer's story. And, and I need client story. It really depends on the client. You know, there's some yeah. people who are m more savvy and more like conservative or more, um, you know, experienced. Um, maybe they're more uh, reluctant to discuss, you know, certain details. Right. And, and that's fine. And you just have to feel them out. There's lots of people where you could scare them away. If you could say, if you say, okay, well, you know, what's your down payment? Where's it coming from? How much money do you make? What's your credit score? All this kind of stuff. So sometimes you just got to guide them to, you know, maybe a mortgage broker or somebody like that, who's going to help them with their financing and, you know, confirm certain things like, you know, are these price points in the budget? Like, you know, th these type of strategies, there's some sellers who, you know, don't want to get too much into their financial situations. You just got to confirm certain things like, you know, uh, you know, how much loans on the properties or, you know, different things that are going to affect the actual transaction. And then there's other people like you got to, you got to walk through them, like everything, like here's your first time buyer, you know, uh, exemption on the land transfer tax. What are we going to get from your home buyer's plan RSP? How is that going to be paid back over the next 15 years? Where's that income coming from? How much of a down payment is going to be? What's going to be your heat payment? How much do you pay for Netflix? Like you're really getting yeah. into it saying like, Guys, think about this. I know it sounds like the payment, the monthly payment's only two grand, but did you think about these other five hundred dollars worth of expenses you're going to have every month? Are you okay with that? And you have to almost talk them down. I feel like I talk buyers down a lot. How many people are actually not experienced? How many people are not prepared for a few things that you mentioned? Like, go like, all oh my them. god, all of them. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just, not, it's just not common knowledge to actually go through all these different things if you're not experienced. But when somebody's experienced. You, you know, they usually end up talking themselves up because they're confident. They've they've told you a lower number than what they really could. And then they end up going more because they're experienced. Inexperienced people usually say a higher number. And then you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you ever think about this? And they're like, oh, maybe I should spend less because I'm not, you know, I wasn't aware of all these things. But yeah, you, you, have, to, you have to be really just like. It depends on the individual. Adaptive. You're 100% yeah. right, TK. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you, TK, um, being in the field as a realtor, um, what I'm seeing now is that, and this is a generalization, obviously there's always, you know, one or two situations that are the opposite, but I'm, I'm seeing that new listings coming on generally, they, they have a handle of where their property really should be selling at now, generally. So they've got the whole idea of January, February pricing, like they, they that's, that's, that's gone and they're coming out at a realistic price in a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But the buyers are thinking 20% down. So they're seeing the price and they're trying to discount it 20%. And, and that's sometimes the obstacle I'm having. I have them buyers that, for example, want to buy a 1.4, but the listings that they're sending me are 1.8, 1.9. And I say, well, this 1.8, 1.9 is actually a realistic price. And now oh, it'll come down. I mean, they're just too high. Well, no, they're not too high. They're actually kind of realistic as to where their pricing is. But I'm getting a, a lot of buyers just looking at the price and just automatically trying to discount. Are you are you experiencing that? Yeah, I mean, that's and that's all part of the learning process. It depends on what their motivation is. I have buyers who might've thought the same thing. And then as time goes on, they're seeing the sales. And then all of a sudden they yeah. go, you know, well, now I really love this property. I got to look at the actual data. And I think the reason the sellers are now pricing them property, which are hundred percent, right? There's way more sellers coming on with accurate pricing is probably because of the data that you explained over the last four to six weeks. 
there's been a lot of flat uh, sale prices. So, you know, maybe a little bit up, a little bit down, but that means that there's a ton more data. When you're in a downward trending sure. market, it's just like when the upward trending market was there, every house on the street sold for under 600 for the last, you know, forever. And then now all of a sudden that one guy goes over 600. How did he know? How did he know he had to pay more than 600 to be able to win that house on that offer night? And it's like this foresight of, I've already looked at a bunch of houses. I really want to get something. I don't want to lose it. I'll pay more than the last guy or anybody's ever paid for that type of house on that street because the market conditions. Well, the seller, they have to have the foresight to say, I'm going to sell less than what anybody sold for in the last six to 12 months, whatever it's been with the foresight, knowing that that's yeah. the direction the market's going. And I just don't think a lot of sellers have that foresight. So they were all chasing the market down. And now it's like, okay, you know what? It was here in February, but I saw in July, my neighbor sold for X, August, my neighbor sold for X. Therefore my house, if I can get somewhere around there, there, it would be market value. And, and better and hurry up it, before it's, it's just an easier time for the sellers. I'm not blaming the agents or the sellers. It's easier for the sellers to get the price right now than it was in May. So it was hard to get the price right in May because well, it's dropping yeah. slower now. Yeah. Yeah. It's but dropping before, like, slower. faster or in May or not, slower now. or not dropping or not dropping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which would be there's slower. Also more, <laughs> <laughs> there's also more evidence, you know, the charts that I produce is one thing, but there's a lot more examples in your neighborhood of recent sales and like it or not. I mean, when prices were going up, the seller was very quick to say, well, that house sold for 1.5. So it's a week later. I'm <laughs> one six now. Yeah. Um, but so there's more examples of current sales right now in this current market. And, and, and the seller just has to, you know, understand that, you know, if we were quick to point out, a recent sale when the market was going up. Well, nothing's really changed other than pricing. You still got to look at the recent sale to figure out where your pricing is going to be. Because so that's when, what the buyer's looking at. Right. So when, when you have like, like you mentioned before, like people aren't rushing to throw their, their houses on the market. So when you have this tight inventory and now like a slower drop in price is happening, or maybe like a little bit of a leveling going on, like, do, were there enough sales that happened during like February till now that it like started trends in areas or are they more anomalies? Like, can they be like brushed aside as like that, you know, that only happened because it was like in this time period, but like now everything's kind of fine. Like, is, is that a thing or is that there was just so many sales that pushed the numbers down everywhere that it's like everybody's fucked all over the place. January, February was La La Land. You know, that's that's the technical term, La La Land. <laughs> but we were all kind of in the eye of the storm of La La Land. Like, yeah, we all were sitting there going, how long is this going to go on? How long is this going to go They're on? not making we're enough in land and we don't have enough property supplies constrained. But those things the didn't green go away. They didn't go away. Did you mm. see? I saw something this morning. Actually, Maybe I, those weren't I, the issues then. Well, somebody said uh, here, CIBC, Canada's population grew by nearly 285,000 in the second quarter. Like, that's that's in insane, no? Yeah. 285,000 in one quarter? We were supposed to we do expect, 430 in the year. We expect population to grow. We expect uh, all these things. We, you know, let's say, let's say the country goes upside down and everything's as terrible as what they say it's going to be with worldwide resection and bloom and doom and you know it's the end of the world as we know it these smaller towns that are going to get hit the hardest where does everybody go they go to vancouver they go to toronto they go to ottawa Montreal. they go to the big cities to look for work well, and, so I, and I'm that looking just at puts more pressure on on pricing, and I, I'm not saying this is the reason prices are going to shoot through the roof. It's not at all what I'm saying, but these are unpredictable, unforeseen circumstances. That how do you how does that affect pricing down the road? You and, you can yeah. tell us, Santo. We won't tell anybody. Okay, you think prices are going to go up? It's okay. Just I, I, let us know, and we won't at all. We won't pin I, you I, to I, it. I promise. But all of us do, don't we? <laughs> well, over time, 
over yeah. time. Um, how much freaking time out. is the question? How long yeah. is it going to take for fuck's sakes to start long, going up like How crazy? long before my house is worth $8 million? Maybe it'll be my grandchildren's grandchildren's, but eventually. So somebody yeah. else posted something that said uh, the exodus from Ontario continues in Q2 2022 net interprovincial migration exceeded minus 21K largest net outflow on record. Well, you got Alberta advertising here. I was Great. I was in the barber shop the other day and I was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Okay, first it was somebody advertising for Calgary. There was Frank Leo. Then it was like a mortgage company. And I was like, oh my God, every ad is real estate. Did the bubble burst or is it like still inflating? Like what's going on? Or I guess it's bursting because everybody's pumping their money into more marketing on radio. Do people listen to the radio still? So there's, you know, there's certain questions. Um, people have always been leaving Ontario. And I, I guess with the increase in rates, it's it's tougher to afford in Ontario. I, I don't, I, I say good for Al Al Alberta. That's very, uh, very uh, ingenious and, and very aggressive, motivating factors to get people and advertising it in our face. Hey, leave on, Ontario sucks, go to Alberta. It's Good amazing. for them. Amazing, it's amazing. Um, but that's always been happening. I mean, we've all heard stories of people doing that. Sure. It's more affordable there. Come to Cuba. But if, you know, if shit hits the fan, they're all going to the big cities where apparently there's more work, right? So... You know, let people. Leave. And the question is, these people that are leaving, could they buy here? And if they couldn't buy here anyways, how does it affect them? Mm. I right? recommend people when, leave. Re, re, well, remember when? <laughs> when <laughs> Quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the 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 c word. Remember when when COVID started and lots of businesses were closed down and. How's this going to affect the, the real estate and so forth? And we had about six, eight weeks of quiet and then boom. A lot of those people that were losing their jobs, they weren't people that were going to buy real estate anyways. And I'm sure. not trying to be mean by saying that. No. It's just a fact. It, it's just a fact. And, you know, so yeah, lots of people are leaving. Were they going to buy here? And And I don't know the answer to that, but we need to know to see how's it going to affect us. They, they would have lived somewhere though. And so yes. it's all, it's all, it all evens out. Whether you rent a place or you buy a place, you're taking housing away from somebody, which pushes somebody into or out of home ownership somewhere at some point, And therefore adds to, you know, the, the supply uh, crisis, which is not necessarily a supply crisis as of yet. I believe the numbers, Daryl, just to touch back on that. I believe the numbers that we need to build more housing, hundred percent. There's there's, yep. there's a clear clear indicator that we need to ramp up the development, ramp up the amount of housing. But more cranes. I think I, th I but, think but, based. Sorry, go ahead. Just based on the market changes that we've seen, and Daryl, I said this to you when we first started the podcast. Podcast is once you take away buyers' capabilities of being able to buy a property. That is when the buyers stop. There's just this insatiable demand. Buyers just want real estate. It's just the way it is. It's Canadians. It's in our blood. It's just go, 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 buy, buy, buy. 10 properties, one property, get a property, don't need a property. I'll make sure I have a property. That's what people want. You take away their buying capabilities. All of a sudden, you turn off the tap and the demand then goes away. And all of a sudden, yeah, our supply issues aren't so bad, right? And that's what we right. experienced with this again. It wasn't, yeah. you know, a massive influx of supply that created this shortage or this uh, downturn. It's been a decrease in the demand based on well, the buying. But not based on. Buyers. That's what it is. They, they lost 20% of like, buying power with interest yeah. rates already. And it's not a liquidity thing, though. It's not like a liquidity thing. It's more liquidity. Like there's money out there like crazy. Is it it's though? Because super is, fucking is it as expensive. accessible as it was anymore? No. You can't it's, go it's to the bank and get the same amount. It's a combo, yeah. But it, if you're willing to go to Calgary, of, like, well, it's but these are there's people that, especially because of the the gig economy, now they can do that because normally you had to be in your office and you couldn't do that. But mm -hmm. let's get back to you know the whole demand thing. There's a certain percentage of demand suppressed because of their access to money. They just can't qualify 
can't, you know, because of the interest rates, they just do not have the same access to funds that they had before. So that's one reason, one that demand is suppressed. There's another reason is the person that believes, the buyer that believes prices are coming down. So they're going to wait and it's their prerogative and they're going to wait and they're, they've got the money, they're qualified, they're ready to go. But in their head, they're thinking, if I could, you know, wait four months and prices will be 100000 lower, why am I buying now? And they don't need to buy now. So that's another group. They have the money, but they're going to wait. You know, there's, how do you, it, it's so hard to just point to one thing and say, that's the reason. It, just as there's buyers thinking prices are coming down, there's buyers thinking, now's the time. Now's the time to buy. And they're jumping in all excited that. They're buying stuff that they only dreamed about back in La La Land in the perfect storm there at the beginning of the year when people were, tr buyers were tripping over themselves to overpay. Yeah. Well, you know? so, so, but let's look at the inverse of all this. Okay. So, so yes, rates have stalled the market and there's less buyers out there, but what it's done is it's, I mean, you have 285,000 people that came in in Q2 alone. So those people got to live somewhere. And so may, they may not yeah. be buying, but they're renting or they need yeah. somewhere to rent. And so the, I don't know what's going on in the last week. Cause I've been in a, in my own little Twitter battle haze, but like, I'm pretty sure rentals are still crazy, right? They are. Yeah. So, are. so like there, there's still a crisis for housing. It's just not maybe the demand for buying isn't there, but guess who's like demand for buying is about to ramp up really soon. People got to live somewhere. Yeah, investors and, and are going to come we, back and be evil again, aren't they? Aren't all well, the investors I get, like? I get the comments on my channel saying these people with multiple properties, they're going to feel evil. the wrath of the interest rates. They're evil. They're going to be dumping their investment properties. And I'm thinking, <laughs> not if they're smart. If they ever had a, a shot at being cash flow positive, it's now. Now. Like, I mean, like, the whole cash flow positive thing is something that has eluded many investors for, for years with the way prices were, unless you put a big down payment, but rents have gone up, prices are down. It's, it's working out to be more in the favor of the investor. Now, not the flipper. The flipper is a very tricky situation, right? Buy and hold now. Buy and what, hold. what about one yeah. more stats uh, question about cancellations, terminations, um, so sort of suspensions, you know, people taking their properties off the market because they are renting them. Yeah, we're getting, we're seeing that more. I, I couldn't give Is that you anecdotal. An exact, just... No, no, I'm seeing no. it. I, I, I'm seeing it more. Um, what we're, what I'm seeing more of are properties both for sale and for lease at the same time. I'm seeing, we've always seen them, but yeah. there's more of them now. Okay. Uh, I couldn't give you, I don't actually work out the stat on that, but okay. I, so personal experience i'm seeing me more yeah. and the rental that they're asking is pretty high so in their mind they're thinking look i'm going to go high on both sides i'll be happy if someone rents it at this price i can keep it for another year or two or yeah. if i sell it i'm going to sell it at that price and i'll be happy you know missing out on the rental income so example i saw right. one downtown um a few weeks ago and i was out yesterday with the same client he said, well, what happened, to, what happened to that one unit? So I just quickly looked it up and it showed that it was terminated a couple of weeks ago. So I looked at the history and it was also for lease at $24.50 per month. It was a condo. It's listed at $750, one bedroom or something. And uh, leased for $2,700. Yeah. So he had it up for $24.50, got $250 over Multiple asking. Multiple offers. Le eh? Leased Multiple it for that offers. price and terminated his listing because he was overpriced, the, the, the price point that he was asking probably by $50,000. And maybe at the at the rental now he's breaking even where he wasn't before, or mm -hmm. maybe he's cash flow positive now. Or maybe he can at the very least uh, absorb more increases for a little while until rates start to tick down again, right? If you go for that high rate, you're I, I got to think somebody's like, if I can't hang on to this and I want to sell it, and the alternative is renting, you better cover that increase that's coming, right? Right. Right. And, you know, it's um, so this is where it boils down to. It's an individual situation and you, you really got to look at it 
from a, a, a one person or one family and analyze it, speak with them, get mortgage brokers involved to help with the discussion, whatever you've got to do to help guide them. But at the end of the day, if you give people the right information, buyer or seller, as, as consultants, as real estate consultants, we've got to supply them with the information they need so they can make the best decision for them, not you know what's best for the realtor. I know a lot of realtors don't think that way, but if you supply them with enough information for the buyer and seller to make the best decision, the best the best decision for their own family, it doesn't matter. They don't buy today; they'll buy tomorrow. They'll buy in a year from now. They'll recommend you to somebody who needs to buy today. You've got a good business that is always going to keep growing. I heard a very beautiful thing from a webinar that um, we were fortunate enough to to learn from a couple of weeks ago. And um, it, it basically said, you know, there's no such thing as a home buyer. Okay. They're all home owners. And that we can't treat people like home buyers because no one wants to be just a buyer. They they want to be like the whole dream is to be a home owner. Right. Yeah. And that we have to look at them from a different lens to say, how am I not only going to help you buy this home, but how am I going to help you? you know, recommend people to help you maintain it, you know, renovate it, yeah. refinance it five years from now and 20 years from now, sell it. Right. And it was like a really just different perspective on, on, we always divide our clients, buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers. It's very, that's just the way it's always been done. Right. And instead right. it's like homeowners. They're all homeowners. Everybody's looking to own a home and they don't want it. Buyer is like a lower, like you're just a buyer, like these I guys agree. here, they own their home. You, I you don't, don't work with buyers. <laughs> Who works with buyers? <laughs> buyers. Jeez. Annoying yeah. buyers always Saturday Gotta morning. show them like show them four houses. whole houses, <laughs> fucking buyers. <laughs> yeah. so it was, it was good. Not, like, it was and nice... actually, when you work with them, they're not even buyers. They're lookers at that point. They're lookers. They yeah, these guys are just lookers. They're takers. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Lookers. But that's that's what it is, right? You, you, you home they're kind of integral, that though. Genius. The buyers genius. are kind of a good piece of the puzzle. You know, it's They're the it's, biggest piece right. of the puzzle. <laughs> I don't the most fucking work part with of them, any though. transaction. Yeah. yeah. Who works and with this them? This is why, you know, somebody buying for 600000 or somebody buying for $2 million, the emotion is the same. Like that first time home buyer is like, wow. And you, you're, you're part of that emotion with them. And the, the person buying a $2 million moving up, say, to their dream home. Man, they're excited. That emotion is 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 there all over again, and and we're part of that. We're so fortunate to be part of that. And it's 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 what you're saying, TK, is totally right. It's all in in the frame of mind. And I, I wish more realtors would look at themselves as consultant, not fortune tellers, and not transactional. Um, that's the nature of of getting paid on commission. I mean, we don't have pension plans or anything like that, and we don't have guaranteed pay. And for a lot of people who don't, who really, you know, for realtors who take their own personal situation above the clients, well, they're, they're making mistakes, but there's a ton of pressure on people to go the wrong way, as there is in other businesses. Right? Sure. These are just um, big, big checks. So it's, it's worth doing things. Yeah. We're consultants and the buyer and seller, we say that, that's what we've said for a hundred years. It's more to understand, but you're totally right. That I mean, these are people, they are homeowner, even if they don't own home, own home, they own a home yet. Sorry, guys, it's my first day with my new lips here. <laughs> even if they don't own a home yet, if that's the mentality, they're they're thinking it. They're living it, and and our our job is dreaming to it. Help, yeah. Our job is to help them the best way. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you, Santo. We appreciate you having you know coming on the show today and having you today again. Um, thank you, realtors. Our realtor my friends, pleasure. our realtor friends who are listening, tune into Santo. I send my clients Santo's videos when I need to tell them things that are just more you know complicated or too detailed for me to tell them in an email. I send them the videos. It's a great resource. Um, if you're a buyer or seller, sorry, a homeowner uh, following Santo and, and listening to his channel, make sure you like and comment and subscribe so that he can uh, you know, give you regular updates. 
because it's as it's as but, accurate as it gets. And it's so, unmanipulated, unstoried no data, pumping. right? Yep, like no bullshit attached goods. to it. Yeah. 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 I'm we telling you, I was keep th- it as pure as possible. Thanks, I, guys. And you guys have a phenomenal show. I've watched you guys grow along the way and uh and it's exciting to be part of this i think you guys are awesome thank Um, you i appreciate daryl only maybe five or six f-bombs in this this show here good i think if you go back and count them there was 10 minutes before you joined (laughs) (laughs) i probably upped the ante there but you know what i I, actually just on on a final note because i really think i was thinking before the show like I go to your channel 100% when I want the stats. I don't look anywhere else anymore. If I want the news, there's like three or four people I follow on Twitter where I know I'm just going to get the relevant information now. I don't read anything on Google anymore. I don't read anything from a newspaper anymore because like, I just don't trust anything anymore. But you are definitely on the list of trusted sources for real estate, like everything. So you're doing a really great job. We really appreciate it. I do for sure. But I actually rely on your data. Thank you. There's not much out there that I could say that for. Believe me. Thank you. And a lot of stuff I pay for. (laughs) I'm running out of uh, facial expressions, different ways of holding my head. That's getting tough. I got to tell you. need props. Get some props. A (laughs) nail and a hammer. We'll we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Awesome. Thanks, Santo. We appreciate it. Hey, guys, I appreciate this. Have a great weekend. You too.